is Julian Rickett. I'm part of an Australian theatre group called One Step at a Time Like This. And we're here in Chicago making our new work, Since I Suppose. Since I Suppose is a walking based work uh, where participants travel through the city encountering the real life counterparts of the scenes that are in the Shakespeare play. That Shakespeare play is Measure for Measure. And so it's, a, it's taking Shakespeare's Measure for Measure as a sort of a basis and laying it out onto the streets in an experiential sort of way. What it is, is an experience for the participant because we feel that it's full of meaning but exactly what that meaning is, is somewhat open to the audience to discover for themselves. Measure for Measure is a city-based play and our work has been very city-based, facilitating experiences of cities, so it was a really good um, match. Uh, it, it was going to stretch our practice to the next stage because we would have to deal with uh, institutions in the city, religion, sex, law. We're just inviting our audience into those environments so that they can witness those real worlds in relation to the fictional world we're feeding them. As a starting point we have the audience experience as a focus and then we have a palette of things that we can that we can use. So with this work we're using we're using film as one of the tools. We're using um, the city as a set if you like. Uh, we're using live interactions and we're using audio as well. So I would say the work is is, is a lot of things or it's drawing on a lot of tools to create a kind of experience uh, for the audience. I describe what we do as, um, I describe it as immersive theatre. The audience is in the centre. The, um, the show happens upon them. They, uh, they experience it firsthand. When the audience arrive, we have our, uh, the devices already installed for them um, on the app that we have made um, from Motorola. On the device, there's a, um, a player with, uh, could be 17 tracks and um, they get shown how to use that device and um, then they get sent on their way and told to play track one. They could be following somebody on the, on the screen or they could be listening to some audio and then when they get to end of track one they'll be in a different situation, a different place and then they'll be uh, told various ways to play track two. Along the way they'll, uh, they'll be watching film, or they'll be listening to audio or they'll be doing both or they'll just be sitting in a, in a real life situation um, contemplating or, or taking in the surrounds of what's, what's around them. We're trying to create a, an open field around the themes or the environments of Measure for Measure in which the participant is encouraged to follow their own train of thought, much more so than ours. In the play, there is a relationship between uh, power and authority and sexuality, for those who may not be familiar with it. It's a play in which a newly appointed head of the city is suddenly taken by 
a novice nun who comes to him to plead for her brother's life and suddenly all that he thought he was gets uh, tipped on its head. So those things are clearly in the play and clearly continue from Shakespeare's time, probably before Shakespeare's time, certainly now, they continue to have some resonance. It's been wonderful being able to generate this work in Chicago because of the height and also the monumental scale of these institutions here, probably not the sex industry but the other two. It's easy for a body to be immersed in this cityscape. We were interested in the kind of performance aspects that happen inside of churches, in law courts, in brothels and to be able to play with our audience being able to experience those performances which we're not strictly speaking generating. Already the architecture is just like performing and we're in a way just trying to focus the audience's eye onto that performativeness. So we don't want to add it, we're not adding anything extra to the city, it's like we're letting the city be Chicago Shakespeare Theatre has been developing since I suppose with One Step at a Time like this for just about two years. Um, I started with the project just after their first visit, which was two years ago this coming fall. Um, they came and did a workshop of what they were thinking about this piece being, and then over the course of two more development workshops and now them being here for the show, we're uh, at a point which we're actually going to see it in full production. This door lines up, see that pole behind you? And that's very nice if you're just, they're gonna be not quite center, I think. They're gonna be there by the time they come out. You look fine. Yeah, a bit needs, that's lower than that bit. Yeah. We've tested this, um a number of times here in Chicago we've been lucky enough to, um, to have a series of developments uh, here in the city and to trial it on trial audience members. Um, we've been given the luxury of, of time which has been really amazing and for this work it really needs it. The thing that's so unique about this work is because the artists are responding to sight. Um, it is essential that they be here on the ground. So a lot of our work has had to focus on having them here uh, in Chicago, uh, being at the venues and doing the work on the ground because it's, it's impossible to develop this kind of work from afar. Through the world stage now, we've had really the most astonishing list of the world's great theaters and theater makers. Uh, play here on our stage and, and here in Chicago. We're always looking as we curate the program uh, for, for works that may stretch the um, imagination and I think this work with One Step at a Time like this is really a great example of that. While One Step was here with us um, back in 2011, uh, we spent a lot of time talking uh, about what they were looking to do and as a um, theater uh, we felt a, a kinship and, and there was really a resonance in terms of the, the newness of their form, in terms of the application of the technology and the, the theater making out on the street. Um, and and we, we casually spoke about what would happen if we took that artistic impulse of theirs and um, joined it in some way uh, with, with um, Shakespeare's artistic impulse. Yes, it could have been just a speech and shorter, I thought. We started by going to the locations and then looking at the Shakespeare text and experiencing what worked and what didn't. In this work it's very difficult to sit at home or in an office and work out how it should be. We often need to actually be there and say, oh no, that's too long or no, that isn't quite fitting there, oh this is great, so let's take this from that section of the play and move it here and then it'll all make a sort of a sense in connection with place. It's always in connection with place and where the participant 
is situated in that place. We're definitely toying with the digital. We like playing with machines and we've been doing that for years. But we tend to work with domestic technology because it's very reliable. And we're very aware how by wanting to work with machines or digital technology, it can upset the audience's experience rather than to enable it. And we don't want to spend too much time on complex digital problems. I think there's a spectrum of response to narrative and people don't need as much narrative as they used to but we all know that now. And so with Since I Suppose we've had to shape it so that the people who need more narrative components get them and the people who like more liminal stuff or they're really into the series of experiences that we facilitate, they get that and don't have to think about narrative. So that's what we find we need to do with this piece, especially as Measure for Measure is a, a little known Shakespeare play. It's not like Romeo and Juliet or Hamlet, where you can assume that people haven't got enough narrative handles. Yes, it's like we want to sort of see there's a clear picture of that. Read measure for measure and then down. What are you saying? See, we, we don't quite get, we don't quite see measure for measure. Because okay. one so of the... Stay out and then but apart from that, I yeah. think that was good. Yeah, the sweep in was beautiful. I got you. Yeah. Alright, slow is okay. Yeah, because one of the ideas is that this is like the credits of the show. Anyway, you come by and you sort of roll the credits a little. With the audio components in this work, we're trying to create a kind of ambience or an internal kind of soundscape, if you like. So when the audience is listening to some of the Shakespearean monologues in the work, it's like they're listening inside the head of the characters. And so it's very intimate uh, rather than performative. I think you just need a band. Just a tiny slither of... There, there, that's heaps. Oh, that's too much, probably. That's perfect. Yeah. I think. What do you think might be left on? It's hard for me to see from this <laughs> so I'll sort of let you guys Can't know. You do a yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> How about, I'll, I'll be here. Uh, the challenges of the whole show are that uh, it's, it's, it's a highly timed show. So um, people following the films, um, they need to be within five metre radius, ten metre radius, well, yard radius, of uh, where the character is in the film, or so they might get lost. So how, how fast do you need to walk for the average audience to, to be right on time with you? And, and um, I think we've got that finely tuned at the moment. So one thing that can go wrong is the audience aren't where you want them to be. Since I Suppose has challenged me creatively because it's taken everything that I know about making theatre and producing theatre and said, forget it, because it's completely different from anything I've ever worked on. Um, and I think to some degree that's true of most of the organization here at Chicago Shakes. We, we get very used to working with inside of the theatre walls and controlling everything, and we have so little control on this piece. Um, and thinking about how we communicate or how departments work together on this is just so very different because A, it's still in development, uh, and B, it's just something that's never been done. It's not just on a stage where we can kind of go, yeah, just move a little more to the left and we'll add a bit of this colour to your costume. So we can't do that. And so one of the challenges for us is that we have to continually trial the work. On, um, on trial audience members and also on each other. And at a certain point, we've trialled it so many times on each other that we become a bit immune <laughs> to what it actually is. Uh, so it means that we're just continually having to bring the audience in, bring the audience in and test and test and test until we feel like we've, we've landed where we want to land. Should I slow down? Okay. So I'm going to walk. So getting, getting, getting behind her as she goes around? Yeah. Instead of 
Yeah. So nice. okay. Yeah. Okay. The greatest challenge has been sort of keeping everybody um, uh, focused on on the the storytelling. Um, not that this is a literal telling in any way of Shakespeare's Measure for Measure, but but at the heart of it. Um, what we want to, to make sure is at the center of the piece in addition to a, you know, a wild one-of-a-kind um, experience. Uh, we want to make sure that there is that, that core, that essence of um, Shakespeare's characters of Isabella and Angelo and the Duke uh, sort of embedded uh, in the city of Chicago. Uh, even though they won't be like any Angelo or Isabella or Duke that anyone has ever seen um, on a stage. I think for me, the thing that I have been most excited about is the new relationship that I feel like I've developed with the city since working on, on since I suppose, and with One Step. I feel like I have been given access to a city I've lived in for almost 20 years in an entirely new way. Uh, I've seen areas of the city that are new to me. I've engaged with it in, in exciting ways. And, and in some ways, I've looked at the city um, and really looked at it and really engaged with it for the first time. And that has been truly exciting. There is no elevator speech for, for this kind of work. And in fact, we don't want there to be. We want there to be a shared um, a shared sense of, of adventure, a shared sense of risk, and a shared sense of engaging in something new, a, a new form, a new experience. And along the way, hear a telling of Shakespeare's 400-year-old measure for measure that you will never um, experience um, the likes of again. Our work is often based on theatrical challenges. So en route, was can we create a performance without performance and eventually the answer to that was yes this is can this experiential theater approach hold language and character and even some notions of plot and that is still to be decided but it will be decided quite soon when we open